<laughs> Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Deuces to you. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. So, I did go ahead and go back uh, to the uh, Super United Blitz uh, that they played in Zagreb, uh, Croatia. Uh, so, I do have the game uh, Shekri Armami Dirov uh, versus Wesley So, uh, taken out of round one. And, uh, you know, Shaq's name is like crazy long. Uh, so, I just went ahead and shortened it to Shaq, which is what he's also known as. Um, so, of course, all my people that are coming from the Philippines, um, I will say Mabu Hai to you. Kamusana Akim Makai Ibigan, Masaya Komi Kiri Kang Muli. Merming Salamat, a Posa Na Nunu, Inga King Ma Video, a King Makai Ibigan. Magandangu Maga, 5 17 a.m. Uh, so, I know at least one person I caught at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Anyways, man, uh, anybody who is coming from Azerbaijan, I will say Salam to you. Uh, chak Sat Go. I appreciate you guys uh, very much for stopping by. But if you guys are ready to go, man, let's take a look and see what we got for this game, man. So we got the move D4. Knight comes to F6. We got C4, E6. Knight to F3. All standard developing stuff. When you play D4, we got D5. Uh, Knight comes to C3. We do see the move C5. We got E3. So what we do is we start off with a semi terras defense, but... Uh, I will mention to you guys in a, uh, a second, I'm going to go back. Uh, we do get into a transposition. So after we see the move E3, pawn takes C4, and then the bishop takes C4, uh, and we have transposed uh, into the queen's gambit accepted. It might look kind of confusing as to how we're in a completely different opening right now, but if we back up, after we see the move D4, uh, and then we see uh, this is how normally the queen's gambit accepted getting into this variation would start. Uh, we would see d5, uh, and then after that, we see c4, pawn takes c4, uh, and then you would see the move e3, probably knight to f6, bishop takes right here, because, you know, you know, black doesn't normally try to hang on to that pawn. Uh, we would see probably e6, a knight coming uh, to f3, c5, and then knight to c3, and as you guys notice, this is the exact same position. Uh, so we just got there from a different move order. So that happens a lot in the opening of chess. That's kind of how, you know, learning openings is a little bit simplified. But going back to what we had in the game, uh, we had this exact position, uh, and then we do see the move a6. And there is usually in these positions a lot of play on the on the uh, queen side, especially when you, you capture and you give up this pawn. A lot of the times you're going to play a6 and b5, and you're going to be trying to inconvenience this uh, bishop a little bit, uh, and even possibly push c4. You know, give yourself a couple little spaces here. So we do have castles up uh, by white. Uh, we have the move b5, like I said. Bishop came back to b3. Uh, we do see bishop to b7. We got queen up to e2. Knight b to d7. Uh, and then we do see the move, super duper logical move, uh, a rook goes uh, to d1. And, I mean, even though, you know, we're a little bit plugged up uh, here, it's it's a never, I, I don't want to say never a bad thing, but it's usually a good idea if you think that you can successfully pull it off uh, to put a rook opposite a queen or opposite a king. Because, you know, sometimes things can get opened up. You know, all we really need is a pawn captures here. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, opening things up pretty good. Uh, so, uh, Wesley So just sidesteps that with queen to c7. Uh, we got the move e4. Uh, pawn takes d4, knight takes d4. Uh, and then we do have the move bishop uh, to c5. Attacking that knight in the middle. So, we have reached a point in the game uh, that if you do want to pause the video uh, and uh, see what move Shaq plays in this position, go ahead and do so. Okay, cool. So I think a lot of you guys can feel it. I tell you guys all the time about these, you know, F7, E6 pawn situations and stuff like that. So I feel like a lot of you guys are either thinking of a knight capture or a bishop capture. Uh, something that you need to be thinking about is that this pawn is undefended uh, and uh, there is also a fork from this square. Uh, so if you do notice and take all those things into account, then you would be coming up with the move bishop takes e6. And you are sacrificing this bishop uh, for a lot of play and to messing up the king. Uh, and this is something that kind of can come up sometimes when you're playing Sicilians and things like that. Uh, but if you did guess bishop takes e6, 
uh, or even, you know, even though it's not, you know, absolutely correct, uh, Knight taking these six in this particular position, uh, then you would be, you know, at least feeling that there's something in the position. But you would just have to do some calculation to see that bishop takes e6 um, is a little bit uh, more accurate. Uh, so after we see pawn taking e6, knight taking e6, and then like I said, we are attacking this queen and this bishop. Uh, and we, you know, as black do not have enough time to, uh, you know, protect this pawn right here. So we do see the move queen to e5. Almost always when you have these types of sacrifices, you're going to see the queen, you know, going to probably e5 uh, just to centralize itself to try to give, you know, a little bit of a defense. Also, it is attacking this knight, so you kind of have to move it. Uh, so we do see the move knight takes g7 with check. Uh, and then the king sidesteps over to f7, immediately attacking that knight. Uh, and in this game, which is a novelty, we see the move knight down to h5. This is the only time that this move has been seen. As of this game being played, uh, normally what you will see uh, is a knight to f5 situation going on. Uh, it's just uh, it doesn't give black quite as much. You have to think about this when you do sacrifice a piece. You know, you are in a situation where you have to be playing aggressively. You have to be making sure that you are uh, trying to get the most out of every single move. Because if you let, you know, you just sacrifice a piece. If you let black kind of crawl their way back into the game, then they'll just pretty much just be up a piece. You know, if your attack fizzled out. So after we would see knight to f5, you probably would see rook h to d8 trying to, you know, uh, defend that uh, knight over there. Uh, and then we would see bishop to e3, knight taking e4, knight taking e4, and then probably queen taking f5. Uh, but then after the rook took on d7, knight, rook would take, and then the knight would take. And, I mean, everything is kind of even, and you just got a little bit, uh, you know, you got an extra, uh, you know, two pawns as white. Uh, but you have a nice little kind of an attack going, and you are down in exchange. Uh, and then so when we see this position after the knight takes here, uh, if we did see the queen taking on e4, you would see queen to h5 with check. The king would come down, and then you'd see knight back to g7 with check. King going over to f6. Uh, the queen going to g5, not only attacking, but also protecting that knight on g7. Uh, the, the king would probably go to f7, uh, and then you would have the knight down to f5. And this is very sharp. In both of these lines, white is actually doing you know pretty well. Uh, a little bit better if the queen does take on e4. But uh, like I said, after the king does go to f7, we do see the knight coming down to h5. Uh, and we are just attempting to try to deflect uh, this knight away, whether taking immediately uh, or the queen taking and then the queen taking, knight taking, then you'd be looking at this right here. But this would be dropping your bishop. So you kind of have to be really careful in this position. But Wesley so of course, is finding the right way to play. Uh, we do see rook a to d8. We got knight down to g3. We got the move h5 because it's like, man, why not attack your piece, right? Uh, this also kind of gives the ability for the knight to kind of hop in if they want to at some point. Uh, you know, attack this, uh, you know, underdefended uh, square here. Uh, like I said, we do see bishop to e3 and then we do have h4. And I mean, you know, black is kind of getting rolling a little bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're starting to kind of push. So you can see that white doesn't have the initiative in this position. Uh, their attack has kind of fizzled out almost all the way, uh, and black is pretty much uh, in the driver's seat as far as this position is concerned. We do see the knight up to f5, you know, kind of a logical square for it to go to. Knight does take e4, and then you do have the move uh, queen to f3. Uh, we got knight d to f6, and like I said, you know, all black really has to do in this type of a situation where they're being attacked like this is just get to a point where they can kind of get their pieces rolling. They are down, uh, you know, a few pawns. But at the end of the day, you know, they are up an entire piece. So, I mean, you know, they pretty much kind of, you know, have enough comp for the situation. A very nice position for black. Rook slides over to E1. We do see B4. So, I mean, the thing that was interesting to me is, like, the pawns are kind of crazy. Like, you literally push this pawn and this pawn and inconvenience both knights. <laughs> so, it was just interesting, like, with the few pawns you have left, like, you're causing some havoc. So, we do see bishop taking C5, pawn taking C3, uh, and then we decide to back up with this bishop down to A3. Now, we have reached, actually, a very critical point in the game uh, because this is Wesley Soul's game to lose. He is in... A gigantic command of this position but he actually gives Shaq a chance to draw the game uh, when he takes on b2 with the pawn as you can see the pawn like the the bar just literally equalizes right so this is a very critical position right here if you want to go ahead and pause the video a second time and try to see what move Shaq should play in this position go ahead and do so All right, cool. So what we actually see him playing in the game 
uh, is a very, very safe move, but it just allows Wesley So to maintain his advantage, and that is Rook A to B1. Uh, and it basically gives Black all that he completely wants. Now, something that you should notice about the position, though, is the fact that if you put the queen and this bishop on the same line, you can attack both of them without the queen being able to defend with a rook over here to b1. So if you notice that, then the move bishop taking b2 should stick out to you as a very viable move. And this is the move that I was looking for. Um, if the queen does take back, which is the best move, you would be looking at rook a to b1. And like I said, there is no way for this queen to come back and defend uh, this bishop. So what the best thing for the queen to do is actually go here and just place an attack on this rook if white gets careless. Uh, but after the rook takes on b7 with check, the rook would probably come to d7. Rook to d7 with check, queen taking d7, uh, and then a rook taking on e4. Uh, and the queen because of its position, is holding down this 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 uh, square. If it was not holding down the square, then of course this king uh, is going to be back rank mated. So you got to be careful with that. Knight taking e4, but you do have a discovery. Knight to d6 with check. The king going over to e7, and then the knight does take on e4. And this was Shaq's way to draw this game. Everything is like fairly even. Of course, I mean, either player can, you know, kind of do anything, right? So it's not like it's an automatic draw, but this does maintain equality. Uh, and you do have a knight versus a rook, which is a little bit of an imbalance. But you do have two complete extra pawns, which can, you know, kind of be something to write home about, you know. Uh, and it's not unusual for these players uh, to actually do a little something, something, even being down this type of an imbalance. Uh, so this was Shaq's chance. But... That was missed. Like I said, pawn took b2, and then we do see rook a to b1. And this allows black to make the absolute best move in the position, which you guess it is a rook on the seventh, rook down to d2. Uh, and then after we see the move h3, rook comes down to h5, just double attacking that knight. Uh, so we do see uh, knight uh, taking, uh, or knight going to d6 with check. The knight coming up to d6. Uh, and then in the actual game, I'm going to show you a side variation, but in the actual game, we don't see the rook taking the queen, but I'll kind of show you what happens if that does happen. Uh, we do see the queen going over to b3 with check, uh, and we're hoping to maybe get a situation where we can remove this uh, knight and take this bishop. But as soon as Wesley So goes queen to d5, uh, it is in this position that Shaq does resign the game. And it's just simply because you just have way too many pieces of black. Not only do you have way too many pieces, but I mean, you have this pawn kind of stuck in black and white's throat. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to back up. Uh, and after the knight took on d6, you could very well take on he right here. But the problem is black's queen was attacked, but your queen was also attacked as well. Uh, so the problem with this is after the rook does take on e5, you would be looking at bishop taking. And then your rook, I mean, is still kind of on pre, right? So after you would take back here, you would be looking at bishop taking back here. And then, like I said, you know. You're going to win this pawn over here on B2, but black just has completely too many pieces. Uh, and, I mean, these knights are going to get rolling, and it's just not the most ideal situation to actually be in. So, like I said, knight went to D6 with check, uh, and then uh, the knight took, and then the queen went over to B3 with check. And it is in this position, like I said, that, uh, you know, Shaq, this one right here, sorry, <laughs> queen to D5. Once he played this, Shaq went ahead and threw the towel in and just, I mean, in his, in his mind, I mean, of course, you're looking at it like, nah. You know, I don't want no more of that, man. So, you know, the sacrifice was very legitimate. Uh, but the thing about when you make sacrifices is you have to play uh, almost like a computer after that. Uh, unless it's just like a completely winning sacrifice. Uh, but if it's in a fairly equal sacrifice, you have to play almost computer like after that. And, and your opponent has to try to mess up. But, I mean, he's playing Wesley so. So, I mean, you play certain players that are going to play like gangsters after you sacrifice a piece. So, uh, I appreciate you guys very much. Uh, Chark set goal. Uh, Miramin salamat. Uh, pa alam. And I'll see everybody next time.